A lot of people struggle with sitting comfortably on the floor. In this video, we'll look at why that is and what you could do to be able to sit more comfortably and more easily. I'm Joe. I make videos about yoga, anatomy, physiology, and movement science to help you understand how your body works and also how it can work and move better. So let's start by looking at the anatomy of sitting. If you're sitting cross-legged on the floor, your hips are flexed. That means that the thighs are being drawn up towards the front of the pelvis. There's also hip external rotation, which means the front of the thigh is rotated away from the midline of the body, and there's a little bit of hip abduction, which is moving the thigh out to the side. As we move into hip flexion, at some point, the thigh bone is going to press against the front of the pelvis. Obviously, the, the higher the knee comes up towards the chest, the more likely that is to happen. And if the thigh is pressing against the front of the pelvis, that's going to cause the pelvis to roll backward, or what we call a posterior tilt. You've also got muscles in the back of the hip. As you move the hip into hip flexion, those muscles are getting stretched, which is increasing the tension in those muscles, and that tension can also start to roll the pelvis backward. If we roll the pelvis backward, that's going to have an effect on the spine. In fact, the back of the pelvis is the sacrum, which is actually part of the spine. So really, any movement of the pelvis is going to have an effect on the spine, particularly the, the lower back or the lumbar spine. So if we look at the shape of the lumbar spine, you can see how it's curved forward. That's important for weight-bearing support. The lumbar spine has to hold up the weight of the rib cage, the head, shoulder girdle, really everything above it. Because of the way that the lumbar vertebra are pushed forward, that helps to centralize the support underneath this stuff that it has to hold up. So if we start to lose this lumbar curve, if it flattens out or the lumbar spine rolls backward, we're losing some of that weight-bearing support. Okay, there's one more little piece of anatomy we should talk about, which is the psoas major muscle. The psoas major, along with another muscle called the iliacus, forms a muscle group called the iliopsoas, which is the major hip flexor. The psoas major attaches to the lumbar spine, to the front of the lumbar spine. It passes across the front of the pelvis and then attaches to the, the upper thigh bone, the inner upper thigh bone. And when it contracts, it pulls the thigh bone upwards towards the front of the pelvis, flexing the hip. It also can pull the lumbar spine toward the front of the thigh because it has attachments to the lumbar spine. Either way, whether it's pulling the thigh towards the spine or the spine towards the thigh, it's creating hip flexion, which is what we need when we're sitting cross-legged on the floor. Okay, let's look at me sitting. You can see that my hips are flexed, externally rotated, and abducted. This is a pretty easy position for me, but if it wasn't so easy for me, let's say I were struggling with the external rotation or the abduction of the hips, what would happen? The thighs would come up like this towards my chest. And we know that as the thighs come up towards the chest, they'll start to push on the front of the pelvis, rolling the pelvis backward, and I'll start to lose that lumbar curve. So as the thighs come up towards the chest, you can see how that starts to push the pelvis backward and rolls the lumbar spine backward. And in fact, really, I'm, I'm kind of falling backward a little bit. Now, I don't fall, of course, because I just let my back round and I can bring my head forward to keep my weight on top of my pelvis. But my nervous system is still feeling on some level like I'm about to fall, which is not particularly relaxing. Also in this position, my abdominal muscles are contracted and my hip flexors are working to keep me from falling even farther backwards. So it's not a very relaxing way to sit. So what am I likely to do if my knees are coming up towards my chest in this position and I feel like I'm falling backwards? Well, as I said, I'm gonna use my hip flexors to try to, to bring myself more forward, to keep myself from falling backward. Particularly, I'll use my psoas major muscle to try to pull the lumbar spine forward. But we know that the psoas major attaches to the thigh bones. So if the knees are floating around in the air, the thighs are not stable, as I contract the psoas major to try to bring myself upright, that's also pulling my thighs. It's pulling my thighs in towards my chest, which is pushing me farther backwards, and I'm getting into this kind of very um, sort of unstable position where I'm, I'm fighting to keep myself from falling backwards, and the more I do that, the more the knees come up and push me farther backwards. So it's kind of a catch-22 situation. So what do we do about it? Well, notice that I'm sitting on a blanket. What does the blanket do for me? Well, it elevates my hips, which lets my thighs drop down a little bit. 
That means that I don't need quite as much hip flexion. I'm less likely to have the thighs pushing the pelvis backward. It's pretty comfortable for me to sit in this position, so I don't need a lot of support. Um, but if I were to remove this blanket, you would see from the side that my pelvis is still a little bit rolling backwards. It's a little bit of a struggle for me to be upright. By elevating the hips, that just drops my knees just enough that the weight of the thighs can help to pull the pelvis forward. I don't have to work hard with my psoas major muscle to try to keep myself upright in this position. Now, if you're a person who really struggles with sitting cross-legged, you might need more support than I do. So rather than a blanket, um, you might want to use a yoga block, for instance. That will lift the hips up that much higher, dropping the knees that much farther down away from the chest, making it that much easier to be able to sit upright. Uh, another option might be a, a pillow or a bolster, um, if that's more comfortable for you. But it could be that sitting cross-legged isn't the best position for you. Everybody's hips are different. Some people have less external rotation available at the hips just due to the structure of their bones, the, the shape of the thigh bone, for instance. Um, and so if it's a position that you really feel like you're struggling with, um, you're sitting like this and it's just, just a miserable experience, you might also investigate forgetting about sitting cross-legged and finding a way to sit on your shins. So I could take a block, for instance, put the block underneath my pelvis, and then sit on my shins in this variation of a position that's sometimes called virasana or hero's pose. Uh, in virasana, typically the knees are drawn together, which requires more internal rotation at the hips. Um, that's not necessary. You could have the thighs more parallel. So if you struggle with external rotation of the hips, you might find that this position, because you don't have to externally rotate the hips, allows your thighs to drop down enough that your pelvis can come forward so you can sit more comfortably upright. I think it's really worthwhile spending the time to experiment with different ways of sitting and find what works best for you that allows you to sit comfortably and easily. Um, that's going to be different for every person, um, so it may take some experimentation. But I would say that for almost everybody, elevating the hips is going to help to make it more comfortable, easier to sit on the floor. Even if you can sit on the floor, you probably will find that it's difficult to sustain that for a long period of time. Um, so if you need to sit for longer periods of time, even if you're very comfortable sitting cross-legged, elevating the hips is going to make it easier. And then the last thing that I'll say about this is that there's really no such thing as the perfect seated posture for you. I think sometimes yoga students get caught up in this idea that I have to find the, the perfect seat right? and then kind of immobilize myself in this position. But in fact, oftentimes the best way of sitting is to sit in a way that's different from what you're doing now. Trying to sit in any single seat for a long period of time is probably going to start to get uncomfortable. So feel free to switch. Sukhasana, sit asana, sit on your shins, put your feet flat on the floor, extend your legs out in front of you. Be sure to shift your position around periodically and that's going to also go a long way towards making it more comfortable for you to sit on the floor. Okay, I hope this was helpful for you. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos about yoga, anatomy, physiology, and movement science, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.